What's going on out there? It's October 28th. I'm Frank Kersey, host of Wall Street Unplugged Podcast, where I break down headlines and uh, tell you what's really moving these markets. It's a great podcast for you today, which is sponsored by Masterworks, who's bringing tokenization to the $1.7 trillion art industry. As always, it's interview day. I have a great one set up for you. And it's with Kyle Sondland. He's the CEO of Security Token Market. You heard me talk about security tokens like crazy. We have our own security token. Now this market's really starting to take off. The Security Token Market is one of the largest content and data providers in the security token industry. You can find all real-time data on their site on every single security token that's currently trading, including the price it's trading at, volume, platform. Again, they got all these data feeds hooked up to it. Uh, really, really awesome site. Uh, he's one of the smartest people in the industry. He's been a partner for a long, long time. Finger on the pulse. One of my most trusted contacts. So, Kyle Silent, thanks so much for joining us on Wall Street Unplugged. Thanks so much, Frank. So good to be back. Always a pleasure to talk to you. So, what's going on, man? You're the guy I go to to get all the inside scoop, the information, everything that's going on in the security token industry. When we were talking probably a year ago, our conversations were probably five to 10 minutes. And I think now they can go hours with everything going on in the industry. <laughs> Why don't you talk a little bit? As someone that, uh, you know, you're an early adopter, you're an early adopter. Like, same as me, uh, to the point where I was nervous if maybe this wasn't going to work out. And now we're seeing really a boom in this industry. What's changed? Why Why am more businesses coming in? I mean, is the regulatory front? It seemed like it opened up a little bit more. But even the trading platforms, while money is being raised across the board, uh, what has opened up in the past eight months that everyone's looking at this going, wow, this is unbelievable. This is an amazing opportunity for tokenization. I think you're you're totally correct that it's it's some evolutions on multiple fronts. So... First off, when we're talking about regulation, which is a core piece of the security token industry, right? When we're talking about a security token, we're really dealing with financial assets, real securities. They follow all of the same securities laws that are set forth by the SEC or by international legislators and, and, and around the world. And so when we're talking about a security token, there is this core component of compliance that needs to be established. And so what we've seen over the last nine to 12 months, and even maybe quicker than that over the last six, is that regulators are getting much more comfortable in approving the licensure that's required, especially on a secondary market perspective. So when we rewind to about December of last year, we saw a really groundbreaking piece of exemption come out from the regulators here in the US that said that broker dealers had much more exemptions around crypto securities. And they used some specific language that I don't want to cite directly, but it essentially gave a lot more flexibility for brokers to be able to handle securities that were tokenized. And so this kind of opened the floodgates into what we saw, which were multiple additional ATS licenses, which is the alternative trading system, essentially the platform that allows for a marketplace to exist like a T0 or like others, but were granted maybe six or closer to 10 now as we move into the end of, of the year here that have now been approved here in the US to, to list and trade digital securities on a secondary market. So that was certainly a, a really core piece was that one of the core issues, Frank, you and I talked about for a while was that there were some potential blockages in the approval process. It wasn't necessarily that there were no's. It was just that we were kind of in this traffic jam where no one knew whether they could move forward or couldn't. And so some of that has changed also, even from an issuer perspective, when it comes to regulation, I'm sure you've talked about it before on your show, but the Reg A plus exemption, the opportunity where you could raise up to 75 million from retail investors in a security, in equity in your company. And we had never before seen a security token actually be approved for this process. And now we have. Now Exodus was not only the, the first security token, which they were selling equity in their company to be approved for a Reg A plus, but they were the first Reg A plus to raise the full 75 million which was an increased cap that was put in by the SEC recently. So we've seen a lot of, of regulatory development, but then I think also you've seen changes from, from the actual industry as they've grown and matured. Yeah, and talk a little bit more about that Reg A, because now it opens up the door for, for retail investors, right? Where if you're looking at the IPO market, if you're looking at the SPAC market, where these companies come out, they come out multi-billion dollar valuations. I feel like in crypto security tokens, you're getting in close to the ground floor, not on the ground floor, but close to the ground floor, early on in these growth stages before they're like multi-billion dollar companies where the insiders are dying to sell you through these IPOs to sell retail investors. Uh, now it's the opportunity where any investor could get into these things. And you're talking about trading on the platforms as well. It makes it easier. You said, I think you said 15 are available. Is that right? 
15 uh, exchanges, uh, marketplaces around the world. Yeah, yeah. I, I had no idea. It was that, it was that. I know. I know. It's uh, was it Kazakhstan, Dubai, Germany have all opened up. But what about here in the U.S.? What do you see? What has you excited in terms of platforms? I know T Zero. We're going to go on in, in December. We made that announcement already. We're really excited. We love the guys at Merge, but that's an international platform. We want our U.S. based company. We want to be trading in the U.S. I like what T Zero is doing. Still very early. I think you're going to see a, a ton more volume, ton more liquidity on these exchanges. More issues are coming to the market, but this is a necessary step for us. Uh, you'll see Securitize as well open up uh, just recently. They were going to open up a, a platform just for uh, accredited investors. And then I don't know where they saw the approvals and said, hey, let's do this. Where we could, we, could, we have a retail platform, which they just opened up, whatever, a month or two ago. But what are some of the others? Is there anything actually excited out there? Because I didn't know there's that many. And I don't know if, if, if uh, you know, the ones in the U.S. There's a couple that had me excited. I was curious what had you excited, though. So what really excites me in the U.S. especially is this opportunity about crowdfunding. So... With the regulation CF as well as, as Reg A+, these are the two exemptions here in the United States where retail investors can get access into some of these early stage deals. And, and so over 3,000 companies to date have actually taken advantage of crowdfunding to order to fundraise for their business. But I think that the primary offering itself is fundamentally broken because I think most retail investors prefer to have that secondary market liquidity. It's something that hasn't been afforded to them on the traditional crowdfunding platforms because that's almost a whole separate business model. And with tokenization, we've really begun to pioneer this idea of secondary market liquidity for these underlying assets, for real world assets. And so... What excites me is that you've got companies like Republic that just raised $150 million in order to, amongst other things, explore and potentially build out a secondary market for the shares that they're creating. We know that they explored tokenization because they did a security token sale of their own. They raised almost $20 million through the Republic note, which is a basket of a bunch of equities that they owned. And they're doing it for others as well, working in the crypto space as well as in the security token space to provide tokenization services. So I think that really with the crowdfunding, it opens this whole opportunity, as you mentioned, Frank, where no longer do investors and users of these businesses or of these products, they no longer have to wait till IPO to get access and to invest and exposure into the products that they use on a daily basis. You know, for the first time ever, investors are going to be able to build secondary markets around the assets and the the platforms that they use and then be able to, to buy, sell and trade those things. And so I think that that's a, a fascinating development and one that we're seeing accelerating very, very quickly. Now that, you know, crowdfunding portals are getting involved, you have brokers on the other side that are traditional, like, as you mentioned, Securitize and others that are, are working on Reg CF and Reg A plus deals. And again, now that we saw Exodus actually successfully pioneer this, as well as as T0 is going to bring, be bringing XY Labs, which did a Reg A plus to over 20 4,000 investors, if I remember that number correctly, that's 24,000 investors in a crowd from 2018 that have had no opportunity for liquidity or the other investors that may want to have participated that weren't able to. So this kind of idea of crowdfunding and providing the secondary market, I think is going to blow up crowdfunding industry as a whole, which is fascinating to see. Yeah. And just to bring everyone in here, right? So we're talking to retail investors, uh, you know, experienced investors know this, but when you're investing in these types of companies, it's all about the liquidity period. And usually if you invest in a private company, the average liquidity period, which is an IPO, or maybe you get you know, acquired is seven to 10 years. So you sit in this company through the, maybe they, they do great at the beginning, they raise a lot of money and maybe their thesis goes to crap and it's, you know, you can't do anything, right? You're sitting there. So it's kind of like worthless, not worthless, but almost worthless to you. So the fact that you could have a reggae and go immediately trading where there's a secondary market, that's why you're seeing, I think, a lot of hedge funds. You're seeing a lot of venture funds jump in here. Uh, Andrew Horowitz is in here. You talk about Pantera Capital uh, investing a lot in these names. But the question I, I – the answer, a question I'm going to ask you, but I want this answer because it's, 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 it's difficult for even me to see. But when do you see this industry scaling to where it, it, it's massive, where – you're looking at a Kraken where you know you could trade all these utility tokens. Is it going to be the, the regulation of secure of utility tokens, which you know as well as I do, are basically all securities outside maybe the top five or six, right? They're securities, right? So when they're securities, they're going to have to have reporting measures, and you could tell all those guys are going to run to the exits. Is that going to open up the door? Is that going to lead to, to scale? Do we need more on, on the compliance front? Because like you said, that the Republic raising you know 100 that that news of 150 million and they are looking to build an exchange i just don't turn tra training platform exchange uh and has them excited but what do you what needs to happen for this to scale we're seeing it now it's a lot of fun it's opening up but how does it get from you know it was like this then like how do we get it like this 
So, I mean, look, I, I don't think you need to look any further than other scrutinized technologies and why look past crypto. And I think that, that what caused crypto to drive mainstream adoption was very simple. Investors really thrived. They made a ton of money. There was a lot of success in it. And whether or not you feel like they're securities or not, that wealth transfer is what drives adoption. You look at NFTs today. Why are anybody involved in NFTs? Because the market has skyrocketed. And those use cases and those, those, those shooting stars are the ones that really drive the adoption. It drives hype. It drives buzz. People get excited. I think that in order to reach full scale of secured token space, we have the infrastructure that's required. And now it's, it's on the onus of the industry as well as other issuers to come to market and offer this to their investors. I think that if you see, if like, for example, Coinbase, a company like Coinbase, if they would have done a security token offering from the early stages and then taken it to a multi-billion dollar company and net their traditional retail investors, their early users and investors, that same return that venture is traditionally expecting of, I think that's where you're gonna see a lot of people getting excited. That's where you're gonna see people that want to invest in either early stage companies or in exotic assets they never had exposure to, or in terms of international investors, having them being able to get involved in U.S.-based assets that pay out U.S.-based dollars and dividends and things like that is another interesting opportunity. But I really think that until there are a few great use cases that do end up really succeeding, that's what's going to drive mainstream adoption, because I think at the end of the day, that's what makes the headlines and, and that's what drives the, the volumes. No, it definitely makes sense. Definitely makes sense. So let's go over some of the things that you do for this marketplace uh, in terms of data, in terms of content, and, and go into security token market. And tell us exactly what you do, and I'll show the website. Because right here at securitytokenmarket.com or it's stlmarket.com, uh, you, you could see a lot of the ones that are trading. You'll see Overstock, INX Limited. I mean, even, uh, what is it, FTX and Bittrex uh, are now trading some of these things, which I think you have on some of these exchanges. You have Exodus. Yeah, the but you've seen there. a lot of these things start coming out and everything. But why don't you tell everyone, you know, what you guys are doing here and, and, and because, you know, we love working with you. Sure. Yeah. So security token market is really a twofold business. The, the first piece that you're looking at here is data. We, we track data from exchanges and marketplaces all around the world, collecting and aggregating all that information around the trading information, as well as the qualitative data of what the underlying asset is. We, we take all of that information and we're currently in the process right now of building out a, a, you know, a more robust trading platform where you're going to be able to, to do research, analysis, look at charting tools, look at a lot of these advanced stock screeners and, and really be able to dive deeper into the quantitative information around these deals. Think of it as, as one of those uh, trading platform terminal kind of style of thing. Obviously, we, we don't have any of those broker dealer or exchange licenses, so you cannot exchange or trade any assets through our site, but you can come through and see all of the information around these deals. From there, we take that information and create research reports, analysis, and media around it, which is really driving the industry adoption because we felt that there really wasn't enough people that were preaching the gospel of security tokens that were helping people understand what blockchain and tokenization can provide to a, a traditional market, what how it changes anything. We found that a lot of the industry was, was pretty esoteric in terms of wasn't super friendly for the average person that wanted to get involved. And so we focus on bringing the, the highest quality data from sources all around the world and then making sure that anyone can, can understand that and make better conclusions and decisions around that information. Okay, now I got to ask you this question because when I bring up the website and the top line here, and I know you can't really talk too much about it, but it says breaking news, we're tokenizing ourselves, joining 380 people who have reserved this spot to invest, click here, that's on your website. Not too sure if you can talk about that yet or not, but it sounds like pretty exciting news. Yeah, we're, we're really excited. We, we felt like one of the best ways that we could help drive industry adoption was to, to help prove the concept along other innovative issuers like yourself, Frank. And so, you know, what we've decided to do is we're, we're currently in a testing the waters campaign for a equity crowdfund. So that's going to allow anyone to be able to invest alongside each other and, and participate in this industry with us by investing in our business. So there's a link there on the website and we're excited because we're really trying to pioneer this this tokenization concept, right? We, we think that crowdfunding as an industry is exciting, but it's missing this piece about 
liquidity. It's missing this piece about blockchain. It's missing this piece about tokenization. And so we're very, very excited to be able to help drive adoption of the industry through uh, this tokenization component and really help prove how capital markets, how specifically crowdfunding can be improved with this blockchain technology. And so we figured that there was no better team than, than the one that, that we've assembled here who's been teaching the best practices through our sister consulting company who's been covering this industry for years, who's been, you know, really, really deep in the weeds. We wanted to do our best to help lead by example, by, you know, following all of the necessary requirements, by, you know, crossing every T, dotting every I, and really trying to show that this is possible and it's an opportunity that other small businesses can take advantage of. And so we're very proud and excited to do that and, and happy to represent Miami as, as uh, where we're based here in, uh, mm -hmm. in South Florida and we see this as the, the crypto capital of the world. And we want to help show other businesses how they can take advantage of the international opportunity as well as the future of tech and capital markets. How, how is it in Miami right now? Is it, do you feel that crypto presence? Are you meeting lots more companies? Everyone says it's a crypto hub. We've had that. The Bitcoin conference was, was massive, massive. Attendance was massive. But how is it out there in terms of uh, you know, the companies that you meet? Are, are you seeing more and more companies move to Miami? I mean, it's it's favorable i know the governor favors it as well and he's making it putting regulations in, in place to to build that to make that the hub uh, are you seeing it you see more companies move there absolutely you're seeing more companies move there but the biggest thing especially in in working in the the tech scene is that you need developers you need that tech talent and that was something that that miami i think really has put a big focus on over the last 12 to 18 months is driving more tech focused businesses driving more developers and and industry experts to the the city here and to the the local ecosystem which will allow more of those businesses to turbocharge their operations and i mean it's it's absolutely kicking off i've seen i think just this week many of, of uh, there are two or three different local miami companies that have just completed monster rounds which is very exciting especially you know when you consider that they're all of most of them are in this blockchain crypto space. You're getting a lot of NFT action. You're getting a lot of blockchain based development action. And a lot of funds are getting involved here as well, especially and in including Algorand has been very active and, and SoftBank has been very active. And so it's been exciting to see that both the investors are here as well as the, the founders are, are trying to drive that vision. And you even look at Miami Hack Week, which was an undeniable success just a few months ago, driving that tech talent, creating this opportunity for, for more of these local developers and more local Miami talent to have an opportunity to participate as well. Yeah. And it's important, I think, for people to realize this, that from someone who has a Wall Street background, I've been doing this for, for close to three decades. You know, being able to raise money through our platform without going through all the BS with investment banks and things like that. Uh, you know, you look at, at when we talk about tokenization, what you hear about real estate market because it's a liquid. You could hear about bonds, debt instruments. You could also hear, uh, you know, we we interviewed um, Scott Lynn from, from Masterworks, right? Who's tokenizing the one point seven trillion dollar art industry, which is fantastic. Has a site up there, secondary market. It's amazing. But if you're a small company right now and you have a brilliant idea and you have a business plan, this is absolutely the way to go. So it, it's instead of going, you know, how do you raise money? How do you have that business plan? Again, you form that business plan. You say, hey, here's a good idea. It's it's not that difficult to raise money in this space, especially considering the people that you're going to raise money from. You could tell them that if you're doing reggae, you're going to be trading immediately. So you can sell out your position. You're probably going to get in a discount. You're going to sell out your position if you want to, or you can stay long term. But at least you get to track, like for my company, Cursory Research, at, at least – it's it's publicly traded where, hey, if I don't do my job, you could sell it. Yet, if I'm a private company, I don't do my job, you're stuck, right? So you, you, having that option is incredible. And if you come up with that idea, there's people that are willing to give you money right now. It's not that difficult to raise money. There's a lot of money out there, as you could see. But this is an incredible opportunity, I think, for small business and retail investors, which we're not seeing, right? I mean, Yahoo uh, you know, was uh, – was, News from Yahoo, but it was uh, Robinhood. So Robinhood came out and, and, you know, they have crypto trading platform, but they did it the Wall Street way and then they dumped their shares and stuff like that. But it, it's like even with Coinbase, I wish Coinbase did it through crypto instead of the Wall Street way. But hopefully we'll see even, even larger companies turn to, to security token tokenization. And I think we're kind of seeing that right now, especially in the real estate front. I don't know if you're seeing that, you know, a lot more big deals come through, which you probably know uh, a lot that are currently in the pipeline. 
Yeah, we just watched Nolan Reynolds, which is a local Coral Gables, or I guess they tokenized a Coral Gables property. Nolan Reynolds is a is a huge real estate firm uh, based here in the U.S., and they were able to successfully crowdfund through CrowdStreet. They raised thirty five million for a, a property, a mixed use property in Coral Gables that they're actually planning to tokenize in the future, which is exciting. And and we're seeing a lot of opportunities there. And and just to go back to your point, Frank, I mean, it's it's. Never before has a small business or has really any business been able to connect with their core customers in a way that that a security token can provide. I, there's a couple examples. Maybe the you look at Oculus, right? This is a company that was driving a product that their shareholders loved or their customers loved, and they raised a GoFundMe campaign or a Kickstarter campaign, excuse me. But that was just pre-sold revenue. Those those pre those pre-sale customers that wanted to support the long-term vision were not given any equity. So when Facebook acquired Oculus, mm-hmm. those early backers got nothing, which is something that is really flawed. And those customers would have wanted to support, would have wanted that opportunity to get exposure into the business. Or even from the other side, you look at a company like AMC, which is a publicly traded company, certainly an incredibly large business, a movie theater chain. They wanted to give every shareholder free popcorn. That was one of their goals. And yet they couldn't. They actually could not do it because they don't know who their shareholders are. They actually make you register on their site and go and proactively tell them you're a shareholder and link that to them because they have no idea since those things are held under street name in brokerage accounts. Even Robinhood was trying to give early exposure to their users and we're having difficulties doing that. So there's a lot of weird structural things in the traditional markets that security tokens help solve in terms of building a relationship with your customers as shareholders, as opposed to bifurcating your customer and the investor. And and that's just, I don't think is a sustainable strategy long-term, especially for smaller companies, that building that closer relationship with the customers you have is a a groundbreaking and totally innovative opportunity to build healthier capital markets. It's something that I'm just incredibly passionate about. No, it definitely makes sense. And, and I want to go into, you know, just one, one or two more questions here where I go to your website, go to the about page. Uh, you have a lot of numbers on there. We take pride in our numbers, 170 plus tokens tracked, 30,000 uh, visitors a month. Again, people can see us do YouTube if you're listening to, to uh, you know, our podcast or iTunes, you can't see it. So I'm going over these numbers, 10 million plus uh, data requests, uh, 200 plus countries and territories and 1.2 thousand uh, hours of content. Uh how much of these figures change from, say, you know, nine months ago? I'm curious. It's been it's been groundbreaking. I think we've been growing at a 15 to 20 percent month over month clip for most of our metrics from views and from users and from page views. It's it's anywhere from 10 to 20 percent based off the month. And I think that we broke a thousand users maybe 18 months ago, something like that. And now we're looking at, at nearly 30 a month. And and the, the industry has has absolutely taken off. But the fascinating thing for us is that it's a global movement. We see the US is our largest individual majority of, of user base, but it only represents about 25 to 30% based on the month. Most of our traffic comes internationally from Europe, from Asia, from, from Latin America, from, from all different countries around the world. And that's something that's incredibly exciting because this is building a global financial system. And we have seen that this is skyrocketing tremendously because of the interest and the opportunity now that, as you mentioned, the rails are here. The opportunities are available. The companies have, have built out their processes. Funds have been raised and deployed and, and infrastructure has been built. And so now we're in a very different stage where the next 12 months is all about that onboarding of new issuers, of scaling platforms, of really, you know, we've proven the use cases. We've, we've figured out some of these difficult kinks in the process. And now we can really begin to optimize that and scale that with, with each new issuer. I mean, you look at T0 alone, which is, you know, has consistently been a leader in the industry. And it took them, you know, two or three years to, to launch and get these things live. And they had two or three tokens. And just in the past two to three months, they've announced five or six that they're going to be bringing onto the market as soon as possible. You're looking at, at potentially OTC markets traded, publicly traded companies that are exploring tokenization as opposed to staying 
on the traditional infrastructure. And so there's just so many different use cases. You've got real estate, you've got crowdfunding, as you mentioned, you've got OTC, you've got all different types of exotic assets, debt markets that are taking off. So they're, the, all of the different industries now are really exploring this, I think, in a, in a way that they weren't looking at it 12 months ago. 12 months ago, it was still kind of a, oh, that sounds nice you know, in the future. Whereas now, I think that it's it's all right, let's actually consider if this would be more cost effective, this would be more efficient and how this might actually look for our business. And that's something that is, is very exciting to see because we've been we've been in the trenches for a couple of years, you and me. Yeah, I know. And as I was going to say, guys, I, you know, if you're interested in doing something like this, you want more information, you can contact, you know, Kyle, myself, I've been through this whole entire process to, to you know, and been, it wasn't easy, right? I mean, it wasn't easy. There's ups and downs. Everybody's like updating their technology. There's new technology. There's different platforms. And just going through that roller coaster, you know, we can help a lot of people. You can help a lot of people. But the more that get on, the more people go to your site, the more people that, that we're hearing from, it's better for the market. It's better for everyone in general. It's, I mean, it's that small where everybody benefits. But, uh, you know, you'll see when you look to raise money, guys, if you're looking to raise money for an idea, when you go to a venture capitalist, they're going to want to take everything. They want a board seat. They're going to want special warrants and options and all this crap uh, that they're going to get in. They're going to dilute the hell out of you. And, and just doing it your way and, and give you that kind of control is really fantastic. It allows you to really focus on the business and grow the business without worrying about partners. And I got to be honest with you, you know this as well. Uh, those guys are not interested in the long-term uh, viability of your business. They want to make money immediately, short-term, get out. And that's what they do. So. You want to focus on a long term. Uh, you have more control of your business. It's really, really cool. Okay, so once to get in touch with you, learn more about this. How, how could they do that? So they can. They certainly need to go to stomarket.com and check out all of our opportunities there. We have our blog link there where we have a whole host of team members that create great content on the industry. This is ranging from detailed reports on arbitrage and on, on the markets, as well as cool use cases like the tokenize this series from Peter Gaffney, or you have token boy journals and many other also great content to learn about the industry and figure out more about what's going on. This would be the best spot to get more information, depending on whether you like research, whether you like, you know, more qualitative stuff taught, we have everything covered there. That's the best spot that you're going to go to get more information. You can also follow us on Twitter. We're incredibly active on social media is STO market is the handle there. And uh, I, I can be found pretty much anywhere as well. Kyle Somlin, you can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, or reach out anywhere you'd like. So you can really find us anywhere. If you search security tokens, you're probably going to find security token markets somewhere in there. And we're not that hard to find from there. Yeah. Well, well Kyle, listen, thanks for, for stopping by. Uh, again, we, we've been doing this for a long time together just to see this thing develop right now. It's a lot of fun. I love checking in with you. We always talk and, and just go over, hey, what we're seeing in the industry, what you're seeing, what I'm seeing. A lot of it is really, really positive, and it's a lot of fun right now. And I just appreciate knowing you, getting to, meeting you in person, going down to Miami, and going through this whole thing where the ups and downs and seeing where we are now. It's pretty cool, right? It creates like a bond. It brings you closer. It's not like, hey, we did this. We made money. Right? No, you go through the ups and downs. You get the crack kicked out of you sometimes. But that builds character. It builds right. uh, you know, that rapport of just uh, and strength relationships. And I'm glad I got to meet you guys, you and Herwig, uh, who, who's amazing. I'm always interviewing you. But uh, And the last thing here, too, you guys kind of do a podcast. Is it a podcast or just like a, like a video thing? What are you guys doing on, on YouTube? Yeah, we have the Security Token Show. It's It started as a podcast with just my business partner, Herwig, and I, and now it's expanded to many members of the team. And I think the quality has only skyrocketed since bringing everyone else on. We've got six different hosts now, I think, and it's all on video. The Security Token Show, you can find it on YouTube. And we put a lot of effort into bringing the the biggest pieces of content from the industry each week. And uh, it's definitely one you can't miss. So I appreciate you, you giving me the time, Frank. It's been it's been a pleasure and honor mm -hmm. to know you and work with you over the last couple of years. And I think that our, our relationship is one that will only continue to develop in, in the next couple of years. So I look forward to that as well. Definitely agree. Thanks so much for coming on. And uh, yeah, I'll touch base with you soon. Take care, buddy. Thanks, Frank. Yeah, great stuff from Kyle. So Kyle and his partner, Herwig, are really good people. They're all in security tokens. Love the passion behind these guys. I've been doing this for a long time together, as you mentioned. I've known each other for over three years. Uh, I was fortunate to meet them in person. Drove down there to hang out with them. And uh, we experienced a lot of ups and downs together watching this industry develop. And we mentioned at the end of the podcast, but it really is true. And, and, and you know, the frustrations and this is going to happen. And to see where we are right now, how much traction it's gaining, it, it's exciting. I mean, and it's still a long ways away from, from getting full adopted, full adoption. 
but all the steps are there and we're seeing it grow. Uh, just a great contact, good friend, someone uh, that occurs your research, uh, occurs your equity owners, you know, going to be doing a lot of business with those guys in the future. Uh, and I meant what I said. When it says, if you're a company out there, and I know a lot of you guys have your own company and stuff like that, and good ideas and expanding. I mean, maybe you have a restaurant, two, three stores, you have great food. Maybe you want to expand even more. You want looking to raise money. If you're looking to do that, uh, look at the security token industry and email me, frankcursorresearch.com. I'll help you. I'm not going to require anything. I'm not going to ask for money or whatever. Nothing. I have lots of companies coming to me, but you know, we've been through this process. I know how to structure these things to make them the most appealing, to make sure that it's not just about you, that it's about your investors, which is what it's really supposed to be about. Because you are going to be the largest investor in your company. So if you're doing good by them, you're going to be doing good by you. But a lot of people just seem like, hey, you know, we'll just, it's a lot me, 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 and not about, you know, the end result is making this experience great for the customer. They can make a lot of money and invest in companies at the very early stages. But I'll go over everything in terms of structure, the compliance, legal. I mean, Reg A is, you know, retail investors, 75. You talked about Reg D is, is you know, a, a year lockup period. That's a credit investors. Reg S is international. So all this, all the compliance, all the lawyers, very difficult to find lawyers that understand crypto and accountants too, that understand crypto and the capital markets. That's one of the biggest problems we had. The people that are real experts in both, but very, it's almost like trying to get someone who's a fantastic writer uh, in the finance industry. I mean, even when you go to school, you're usually not great at both English and math, right? So being a great writer and being good with numbers just doesn't go together. Believe me, in this industry, you don't see that a lot. When you do, it's cool. Uh, so yeah, having all that experience and having the right people to talk to, if you ever need help, guys, reach out, frankcursoresearch.com. Again, I'll help you. I'm a believer in this industry, obviously. You see what I've done for my company. It's really, really exciting. Uh, and not only that, the companies that are coming to us, it's going to give you an opportunity to gain access to these new ideas, and a lot of these security token offerings, you can get in before they actually start trading and you can get in at discounts. We offer the discounts to, to our early investors, which is uh, you know around 20% on average. And you know, it's great and having that kind of access. It's almost like giving access to, to you know the private markets or secondary, tra secondary uh, offerings where they offer warrants and stuff like that. But this is what you're going to get even through uh, Curzio, uh, you know, the Crypto Intelligence subscribers and through that newsletter. So if you're Curzio One, which you own all our products, you'll get that too. But that's what's going to open up that access. And that's why I'm excited about that product. As you know, we have a special order for the product. You guys know, you've probably seen emails and stuff like that. Uh, we are doing very, very well. A lot of new people are signing up, which is great. The average position in that portfolio is up over 600%. That's not a joke. I show my full portfolio winners and losers to show you. Uh, you know, that performance. Uh, and it's cool. It's just, it's a really good video, a really good presentation. So if you're not subscribed, definitely take a look. Uh, it's at cursorresearch.com. And the offer is 40% off the retail price. And I'm also giving you a year for free. Usually we'll do like one or the other. We're doing both this time because I really want you guys in for two years. As you can see, we're 65,000. We go to 58,000. Maybe we go lower. But getting in and out of some of these things, you'll see a couple of things in the portfolio that, that are going to be moving and how we add to these things. And, you know, you got to be willing to, to accept the, the huge volatility. But overall, when you see the direction of crypto, you see the direction of Bitcoin, how many more people. Even now, FDSC came out and said, you know, banks are looking ways to, store, to, to hold Bitcoin. Bitcoin, it's here. It's going to get bigger. It's limited supply. That's the inflation hedge. That's the anti you know Wall Street play. Uh, it's here. As Bitcoin goes higher, you're going to see a lot, a lot of other names go higher in this space, and especially through the three trends that I mentioned to you, which are DeFi, NFT, security tokens, and also metaverse. Everyone's talking about the metaverse like crazy. Facebook, that comes through crypto, guys. That comes through crypto. And... That's where you're going to see the biggest innovation within that industry. And that's why Facebook is teaming up to launch their own crypto. Again, it was the Libra thing that got thrown away and everyone crazy about. But again, this is what they're doing. This is their goal. This is their next growth market, uh, You know, which Dan and I talked about yesterday. It's really, really exciting. So cool stuff. If you want to learn more about that, even if you don't subscribe, it's perfectly fine, guys. Just take a look at it because I'm also going to give you a uh, – you'll learn a lot about the crypto industry, why I'm so excited. But I also give away a free pick for you to watch that too. And it's a good pick. It's a good crypto pick. Very, very good name. It's not like some bullshit name. I'm like, hey, okay, the name of the pick is Ethereum. Right? This way you'll hate my guts, especially if you don't subscribe to any of our products. It's not that. It's a really good name that you probably never heard of that I'm excited about. And uh, – it's currently in our portfolio. So, guys, uh, last thing here, just be sure to visit Masterworks, who is our sponsor. These guys are great. Talk to Scott Lynn. Uh, I can't wait to go see his studio, the artwork and everything. Just, you know, tokenizing art, right? $1.7 trillion industry when, you know, again, another industry where you could just go in there. Uh, 
buy a piece of, uh, of you know, an amazing art piece, right? Uh, and, and works from, from some of the greatest artists out there where that market was only open to the rich elite. Now it's open to anyone. And then you could have that, you know, small little, you know, part that you own of that asset, which you're owning an asset, right? You want to own assets in this market. People who own assets are doing fantastic. The people who don't are getting crushed. And it's sad. We've seen that big division. But that's what the Fed is doing. With low interest rates, constant bomb buying, all assets are going to continue to inflate. It's going to be a buy the dip mentality, which we've seen for the last seven years, eight years, every single time. Everybody gets nervous. And what happens? The market seems to always bounce back up to new highs. Uh, again, Fed, rates historically low and going to stay there. And the Fed just, you know, pedal to the metal, throw more money at this market. It's going to continue to inflate assets. And art is one of the best performing asset classes over the last 20 years, even outperforming the SP 500. So to see what Scott's doing, what Masterworks is, is amazing. And the fact that he provided us a special link for you to go on where you can bypass like that request process, which you got to go there and request access and then back and forth and stuff like that. But he said, hey, you guys can get right on, get right on the platform immediately to sign up. To do that, go to www.masterworks.io forward slash WSU to open an account. I open an account. It's very easy. I'm going to be trading a lot of art on that site because uh, they have a really, really lot of good stuff on there. Seriously, they have a secondary market that you could trade. So, uh, yes, they are a sponsor. Yes, I'm talking about them now, but, you know, I'm only going to have companies on here and spot that, you know, we're offered sponsoring them or they're sponsoring us. It is sites that we use, companies I respect, CEOs I respect. Uh, and, again, this is a site that I use I really like. So definitely go check it out, masterworks.com. That's it for me. Questions, comments, I'm always here for you. FrankCruiserResearch.com. Love you guys. Been busy getting that token on T0. It's a lot of fun. Business is doing good. Saw a lot of crypto newsletters. Um, hiring more people. You know, it's just, uh, it's pretty crazy right now. And I love crazy. I love it. So I just want to say none of this happens without your support, without you guys listening to the podcast. This is what started all. Uh, that's why I put so much effort into it and, and try to even provide you ideas outside of the newsletter sometimes. So I uh, just want to say thanks for all the support, guys. Love you. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Take care.